Good afternoon. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap and look ahead. 大家好，欢迎收看今天的直击美股。我是主持人赵冰晶，在纽约向您问好。今天是二零一六年十二月七号，星期三。美股三大股指基本高开，但是在午盘之后呢，创新高继续成为了市场的主旋律。道指以及标普均创下了历史纪录，金融板块以及房地产板块领涨。而在油价方面呢 ，WTI 轻质原油期货的价格一度又跌落至了五十美元每桶的下方。市场担心 OPEC 减产协议的减产规模呢，可能不足以让市场达到再平衡。All-time highs are not news.、Uh, record highs are made seemingly every single day. Today, Dow Jones surged up almost、uh, 300 points. The trading tone in November was about Trump sector winners. What do you think is the trading tone、uh, in December? In, in another word, which sectors you have your eyes on? You know, you could have your eyes on a lot of sectors.、Mm-hmm. Lots of sectors today all made all-time highs.、Mm-hmm. Some have been making all-time highs. Some have、yes. been playing catch-up.、Mm-hmm. You know, recall also on Friday I talked about buying. The spiders again, the small caps again, oil as well as Europe or the calls for Europe, and I'll tell you why. Because you know we talked real quickly before we get to the charts about、mm-hmm. when you're above the eight and twenty-one day moving average, you're in a healthy market. You try、yes. and be long. You try not to be short.、Mm-hmm. So if you look at just that rule alone, you could have been long the S and P or the S and P cash and the spiders for multiple weeks post election. Let's take a quick look. Here is the S and P cash. If you remember, I tried to give you guys a blueprint. Look at this Brexit blueprint. When you had this sharp move lower, your reflex rally back, your commitment to it, and right around here is when you could have gotten pretty long for an 80 handle move. So this was pre-election in the U.S. This was your almost right around election day, and then the day that President Trump got elected, right here, we took back the 8 and 21 day moving average. We were below. So if you wanted to be out of the way here. For almost 50 handles, this is when you could have got back involved. Then we ignited above this descending trend line, and then you had four days—one, two, three, four days—to buy as we held above it. And now look where we are. And if you look at this minor pullback, we pulled back to basically retest a prior high here. What did we do? We held above the 21-day, basically held around the eight-day, and then today we broke above a pivot high, which sometimes unleashes <laughs> a lot of、uh, excitement. And that's exactly what happened here today. 今天，《时代周刊》选出了2016年度人物，新晋当选总统特朗普当之无愧受选。而《时代周刊》对此的配文呢，是美利坚分裂国总统。Time Magazine named Donald Trump Person of the Year, which is、uh, no surprise. In the article, he mentioned he will bring down drug prices. What do you think、uh, is going to do with that sector? Well, you saw a little reaction, right? The,、uh, yes. The bios were out of play. And the bios have been kind of weak. The bios、mm-hmm. had a, a post-election bounce because they thought that oh maybe now that Hillary's not going to be involved, that there'll be some pressure off healthcare and the bios. But if you look what happened here, okay, this was your you know gap up after the the election, okay, came up, then failed, and then what did it do here? It broke below the eight in the 21-day moving average, and it also broke below the post-election pivot. So right there, that was telling you that this excitement. Was not warranted, or there was no commitment to it, and now look at it. So this is just out of play, and I would continue to avoid the bios. 一向语不惊人死不休的特朗普今天将矛头指向了生物科技板块。就在他当选过后呢，生物科技板块的涨幅一度达到了百分之九。市场以为他可能不会像希拉里一样打压高药价，但是呢，市场可能误会了他的意思。今天特朗普指出，他也将会继续打压高药价，这是促使该板块今天一路跌落了百分之三。Oil disappointed the market again with the worries about OPEC deal reality. How come we didn't think about the OPEC output cut may not deep enough when the OPEC deal came out at the first place? Well, when the OPEC deal came out, I think oil went from 46、mm-hmm. to 52, and 52 was resistance.、Mm-hmm. And we talked about being resistance at 52, so that was a target. Now there's supposed to be a meeting on Saturday with non、um, OPEC members, so we'll see if that's the next catalyst. If you look here at the USO, all in all. You know, not the end of the world. Okay, look at resistance. We talked about this resistance, you know, for a while. So sometimes that's where things get rejected, right here. So now you want to see what type of pullback we have, and you know, right away, it's not the biggest deal. We only pulled back to what the eight-day moving average. So I would say holding somewhere around here, okay, and turning up would give you some clues that you could buy this dip in oil. 
。而明天的市场将会关注即将在欧洲举行的欧央行货币政策会议，届时欧央行将会如何看待前几日的意大利公投失败，而又将出台什么样的货币政策来留住其他的欧盟成员国呢？我们将会拭目以待。Tomorrow we have the ECB meeting. You think we should hold on to the euro position? I would sell half. I sold half today, and if they come out and they don't extend QE by six months. I will be buying back some shares in Europe. Four days up, sell half, pull back on that because there's a slight disappointment. You wait, you buy it back. That's how you massage positions. That's what we have today. Yes, and tune in every day because there's a lot of action. There's a lot of rotation. Lots of things to do before year end versus just trying to have an opinion that the market can't go up anymore. That means you're listening to way too many people out there, and you're not listening to the charts. 好的，以上呢就是今天节目的全部内容。感谢您的收看，我们明天同一时间再会。